So the cat's out of the bag and the date is set. March 25th is when both the Lithoid Species Pack and the version 2.6.3 update are publicly live. And with this update, there's a lot of changes to the base game that come with it. Don't worry though, the changes won't be anywhere near as significant as they were with the version 2.2.7 update. How's everyone doing today? This is Mobius Y speaking, coming at you with another video for Stellaris Console Edition. So if you have not been keeping tabs on the Stellaris Console Dev Diaries over the last month or so, first off, I highly recommend you start doing that. You can check them out on the official Paradox Interactive forums, and the Stellaris official Twitter account also posts about them whenever they are made. For several weeks, we've had references about an upcoming update to Stellaris Console Edition, but we were never 100% certain which version we'd be updating to. That all changed with the latest Dev Diary, number 23, which was posted on the forums about diplomatic stances and envoys. These were mechanics introduced in the version 2.6 update on PC, dubbed Vern. So it was kind of obvious we were leaping ahead to at least version 2.6. Now for context, the PC version released alongside the Federation's expansion DLC, so not only is this update going to bring new mechanics to console edition that bring us in closer parity to PC, but it's also laying the foundation for future DLC releases on console edition as well, just like with the update to version 2.2.7 did a year ago. Now let's talk about some of these changes from the dev diaries, and we'll start with the aforementioned diplomatic stances and envoys. Envoys are one of the most important changes included in the free update. Envoys represent diplomats that your empire can send on various assignments to improve or harm diplomatic opinion from other empires. Envoys are assigned to a task for a minimum of 360 days and can entail improving or harming relations, assigning to a federation if you're in one, or assigning to the galactic community. Envoys are automatically recruited for your empire, and should one die, it will automatically be replaced. Every empire is guaranteed at least one envoy, and the number of envoys can be increased through ethics, civics, and traditions. Also, sending envoys will be required to execute most diplomatic actions. Next up we have Diplomatic Stances. These are changed in the Policies screen and allow further customization of your playstyle and your empire in general. Each Diplomatic Stance affords its own bonuses and malices which can affect how other empires view yours. Diplomatic Stances are also intended to be quite different from one another as shown in these preview screenshots. One of the additions coming in this update is ideal for those of you who get your jimmies wrestled over admin cap and your empire sprawl. You'll be happy to know that there is a new building called the administrative offices which you can construct on your colonies. These offices initially provide two bureaucrat jobs and has the capability to be upgraded to higher tiers and provide even more bureaucrat jobs. This new job adds more admin cap for your organic empire. The jobs that provide more admin cap for Gestalts are the coordinator for a machine intelligence and the synapse drone for a hive mind. The addition of these jobs increasing your admin cap is in direct response to the changes being made to Empire Sprawl. You'll find that in the new version going over your admin cap grants even harsher penalties than before, and even things like the pops in your empire will increase Empire Sprawl. There are still some differences between empire types that affects how hard these penalties will hit you. For example, a machine empire gets double the penalties of a normal organic empire, while a hive mind suffers 25% less penalties. Megacorps will still have 50% more applied to their penalties than a regular empire. Some other additions coming with this update are relics and archaeological sites. Now I'm sure some players might have been under the assumption that these mechanics were only going to be available with the Ancient Relics DLC, but that's not the case. There are a few relics and archaeological sites that will be in the base game, but as usual, the amount of relics and dig sites you'll come across in your game will drastically increase with the more DLCs you're playing with. The base game's relics usually involve the endgame crises, while other relics we'll have with this update are the Galatron from Megacorp, the Khan's Throne from Apocalypse, and the Aether Drake Trophy from Leviathans. Any other relics can be added later with the Ancient Relics DLC, whenever that's happening. Now, not everything with this update is shiny and new. There are also several changes being made to parts of the game that have existed for some time. In my opinion, one of the major changes is the overhaul of megastructures. The simplest ones are just balance changes made to some of the megastructures. For example, a complete Dyson Sphere will generate 4,000 energy credits per month, and a complete Matter Decompressor will produce 2,000 minerals per month. 
One of the most notable changes to mega structures is the, in their acquisition. They will not all be immediately available after getting the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk anymore. Choosing this perk now unlocks the technologies to build a ring world, Dyson Sphere, or Matter Decompressor, provided you have the necessary DLCs for them. With this update, most of the mega structures in the game are unlocked when you research their associated technologies. Those that are not unlocked from the Galactic Wonders perk have a chance of randomly being available as a tech option once you've completed their prerequisite technologies. This is so that these powerful constructs are not all gate locked behind a single ascension perk, enabling you to forego taking Galactic Wonders on some playthroughs, but still have access to some mega structures for your empire. Frankly, I like this. A couple other Ascension perks that see changes are Master Builders and Voidborn. The Master Builders perk still gives an increase to Mega Structure build speed by 50%, but also allows a second Mega Structure to be built simultaneously, provided you can supply the resources, obviously. Voidborn no longer unlocks the ability to construct habitats, but instead increases their base habitability by 20%, and allows the construction of two additional districts. Speaking of habitats, they're getting a much needed overhaul. Habitats have not been that good on console edition over the last year, and thankfully this update will change that. Habitats will have the ability to construct special districts that is determined by the resources generated from the planetary body you construct them on. For example, as shown in the image, if you construct a habitat in orbit of a world that produces minerals, you can build astro mining bay districts which will provide minor jobs. If the habitat is in orbit of a world that produces science, you'll be able to construct special research districts on your habitat instead that provide researcher jobs. Now, not everything that's coming with this update has been brought up in a dev diary, so it's left a lot of rooms for speculation. One thing that was confirmed with the update's trailer that recently released is the addition of Origins. These are yet one more layer of customization made available in Empire Creation and were so sorely needed in Stellaris Console Edition for quite some time. These origins gets rid of some of the unnecessary civics that are available like syncretic evolution and post-apocalyptic, which didn't make much sense as civics since empire civics are supposed to be the kind of guiding principles that your empire's people abide by. With origins, there will again be some available in the base game, but many more are also available with DLC. We'll even have a new origin made available with the Lithoids DLC releasing on the same day. Another thing confirmed with the trailer is the introduction of the Galactic Community, which will allow us console edition players to finally become the Senate as we've always dreamed of in our power fantasies. I am the Senate. Not yet. There are some other things coming with this update that have simply not been mentioned, and in order to find out about them, you'd have to comb through the patch notes from the PC game for each version from 2.3 up to and including 2.6.3. One thing that I discovered from perusing these patch notes was the addition of a 25 times Crisis Strength modifier. Yes, a 25x Crisis Strength modifier. Not just 16 times the Crisis Strength, but 25. This should make the endgame very interesting for masochists like myself, and I'm looking forward to trying it out on stream. And I think that's all I'll talk about in this video. If you'd like to go over the dev diaries yourself, which I highly recommend you do, I'll link the ones we've had so far in the pinned comment. Go check them out because they discuss a few other things which I did not talk about in this video due to time constraints. Otherwise, this would easily be 45 minutes long. Also, to stay up to date with the new Stellaris Console Edition dev diaries in the future, you can follow either the official Stellaris Game Twitter, which posts them whenever a new one crops up, or even follow my own personal Twitter, linked below. That'll be it for this video, so if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. I'd greatly appreciate it. And leave a comment down below what you're excited for with this next update. To see more videos about Stellaris Console Edition just like this one, and also playthroughs of the game, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new video. The goal for 2021 is to try and hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of December, which is a pretty tall order, but I think we can do it together. And the best things you can do to help are, of course, subscribe yourself and share this content with anybody else who you believe would be interested in watching join us on the road to 10k don't forget to check out the links in the description below you'll find one for the official stellaris discord channel where you can become part of the greater stellaris community there's a big section for us console edition players to talk about the game ask questions discuss strategies and even set up multiplayer matches there are also links to my own personal accounts as well You'll find one to my Twitch channel, where I'm currently streaming four days a week on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
and it guarantees to stream Stellaris console at least once or twice a week. There's also a link to my Twitter where I'll repost important announcements regarding Stellaris console edition straight from the Stellaris official Twitter, and I always post whenever I go live on Twitch. Last but not least, you'll find a link to my own personal Discord channel for fans of my content to freely join. Most everyone there joined because of my Stellaris Console Edition content, so it's another place you can talk about the game with other players and in a much smaller and less active community. You can also take part in the events we have taking place there, such as submitting clips of your favorite moments from my videos or live streams, or taking part in viewer polls determining which games from my library I play live on stream. Thanks again for watching, this is MobiusY signing off for now, and I hope to see you again real soon.